Yes, the deadline is looming for Speaker Pelosi and the White House to reach a stimulus deal before Election Day. Meanwhile, an estimated 8 million Americans have fallen into poverty since May. If you can just break this down, what are the odds of this deal getting done before election? And do Democrats bear some responsibility for not getting this aid to Americans sooner? You know, I see what's happening to people all across this family, uh, all across this country. We have millions of people who are out of work and millions more who are worried about whether or not they're going to be out of work. Millions of people who have lost their health care coverage. Millions of parents who are struggling because their schools can't reopen because they don't have the resources to do it. Millions of small businesses that have been closed up. Millions of restaurants that may never be able to open again if they don't get some help. The Democrats have had a plan on the table since May to be able to address all of this, a plan that we've laid out there and said, please come negotiate. Let's make this happen, but let's take care of all our people who need help. And the Republican response has been no, 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 and no. And we've, we've tried altering parts of it. We've tried offering less, but we just can't get it going. And now even uh, Mitch McConnell, he said he doesn't even want a deal. I just, I don't understand how these people can look around and see the suffering in this country, see the need, see the importance, and and not be willing to act. I don't get it. Yeah. Well, there are there are some Republicans who are already starting to distance themselves from Trump. I think they see the writing on the wall, if they have a brain in their heads. Uh, but if Trump refuses to peacefully transfer power, as he has suggested or threatened that he might do, do you have faith that any of your Republican colleagues will make good on that promise to force him out? Or do we have to just go there physically and wrench him out of the chair in the White House? You know, look, I, I sure hope so, that Republicans would stand up. But let's be clear. That's a question we need to keep asking every Republican right now. We need to ask that of everyone who is in the House or in the Senate who is a Republican. They're out there. They're running for re-election. Ask them this question, because this is a question that goes right to the heart of democracy. Peaceful transfer of power is what we do as a democracy. And for Donald Trump to indicate that he might be willing uh, to turn in a different direction and not to have every single Republican in elected office stand up and say, no, that is not who we are and we will fight back, that's fundamentally wrong. So let's keep pushing the Republicans on that. They're the ones who need to be answering this question. Mm -hmm. Senator, Biden talks a lot about restoring civility. He talks about bipartisanship in Washington, working across the aisles. There are some reports that his team is vetting uh, Republicans for cabinet positions. In a recent interview you did with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she called bipartisanship a vintage fantasy. I must be old, because I, uh, I, I'm, I'm fantasizing about bipartisanship, too. So are, are Biden's dreams and the concept of bipartisanship. Is it realistic in today's Washington? Can we get back there? Can people play nice and cooperate? Actually, I, I will try to do this really fast, but let me tell you a story. And that is uh, hearing aids. Hearing aids are really expensive. Why are they so expensive? Because of this incredible tangle of state laws that has permitted a handful of manufacturers basically to be like monopolies and drive up prices. It occurred to me, we could fix that at the federal level. We could pass a law that would reduce the cost of hearing aids. You know who the first person I called when I got this law worked out? Was a Republican. And so was the second, and so was the third, and so was the fourth. And ultimately, built a bipartisan coalition. It went to President Trump. It got signed into law. And next year, the FDA is supposed to finish up what needs to be done on certain rules so that people can buy hearing aids in drugstores and bring down the price the same way the price of glasses came down. I mention that by way of saying there are things we can work on together. What we have to remember as elected officials, whether we're Democrats or Republicans, we're here to support what Americans want and what Americans need. Most Americans 
want to see us cancel a big hunk of student loan debt. They want to see us invest in child care. They want to see us preserve the rule of Roe versus Wade. They want to see us expand social security and disability payments. They want to see us make changes that invest in Americans. And you know what? We can do that. And I will invite Republicans in to join us in that because our job is to build a better country for everyone. Well, our thanks to Elizabeth Warren. I hope you will also push the idea that every child should have access to the internet so that we can even the playing field. I'll just throw that out there. Uh, I think that's important, and that's something you all could do, bipartisanship included. We thank you for coming. We always are happy to see you. Come back anytime.